Welcome everybody, this is Mr. McGee here with your Kirkwood School District 6th grade science introduction into force and motion. We're going to take a look at uh, goal one today. So, uh, goal one says that students will be able to classify different types of motion. Now what they mean by that is I mean by if I've given you an object that is in motion, can you put it into one or more of these four different categories? And what we're going to try to do today is we're going to teach you about these four different categories so you can do that. First one's called straight line motion. It is the motion of the object that is, of course, acting in a straight line. You can see an example of the image there on the screen where you, where you have the, the, the end point and then the ray shooting out from that point, which tells you that there is a starting point and that objects are in motion in that straight line. They're not going up, they're not going down, left, right. They're simply moving in a straight line. Example of straight line motion is a car driving east on a level highway. Notice that the car is moving and there's a direction east on that level highway. The motion of the car may or may not be at a constant rate. It may speed up, may slow down. In either case, the automobile is moving in a straight line. It's like a ray in geometry. It has the same slope and will not ever change. Okay? Here's a good video on uh, straight line motion. It's just simply two dudes drag racing their car. It's pretty fancy. Don't try this at home, kids. Fancy. There we go, starting point, straight line motion. Perfect. All right, so then the second kind is a projectile motion. A projectile is uh, any object whose only force acting on it is gravity. This is an important thing. It's an object that's in motion where the only force acting on it is gravity. So if you take a look, you've got a guy dropping a ball, throwing the ball up in the air, or throwing it at an angle basically sh saying that once that ball leaves his hand, it, the only thing that's acting on it is gravity. So an object dropped from rest is considered a projectile, provided that the influence of air resistance is negligible. So we're assuming that we're not talking a whole lot about air resistance right now. An object that is thrown vertically upward is also a projectile, and the object was thrown upward at an angle, which means if you throw it to somebody, okay? You can think of a quarterback throwing the ball to a receiver, all right? A projectile is any object that once projected or dropped continues in motion by its own inertia and is influenced only by gravity, which means that as soon as that person lets go of that ball, the only thing that's acting on it, there isn't somebody carrying it, all right? There's only thing that's, some, that's acting on it is gravity. Example of projectile motion, one of your favorite games, and one of my favorite games, Angry Birds. These guys are all projectiles. Every single one of them. It's a boom! Oh! Here comes more. Here comes more. Here comes Boom! Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so the birds. I'm going to pause here real quick. Alright, right there. So, right there, you can see this bird. Right there, that bird. That bird is a projectile. There's nothing acting on that bird except for gravity. That's it. So it's a great example of projectile motion. Circular motion, the motion of an object in a circular path. That one's sort of a well duh one. Includes motions as diverse as cars on a Ferris wheel to satellites and orbits around the Earth. Kind of motion, somewhat special, and the object ma ma maintains a constant speed. So it doesn't speed up and then slow down, then speed up, and then slow down. It's considered to be a constant speed in a circular motion. However, the direction of the velocity does have to change continuously to maintain that circular path. Great video. I love this. You get to see this cool video about a candle and how it moves in a circular path. It's pretty amazing. Check it out. Circular motion. All right. To go in a circle, you have to be pulled towards the middle of that circle, right? So if you ride a merry-go-round, you know, you're going around in a merry-go-round, you feel like you're going to be flying off to the side, 
All right, that's because you're being pulled to the middle of the circle. So if I want to spin this in a circle, I have to pull it towards me because I'm the center of the circle. All right, and that circle of motion, we call that pulling towards the center centripetal force. Okay? And so you can do real cool tricks with that. As you can see, I'm going to take this little uh, platform here and put some water on it Whoa. and make it go in a circle. Got it on the table here. And now I have to pull it towards the center of the circle and it will go in a circle. All right, so here we go. 360 Whoa. degrees upside Check that down. out. The Amazing water is not spinning anywhere. Of green water. Now, why did this work? So, when this was traveling in a circle, remember, it was being pulled towards my finger. Well, really only the platform was being pulled towards my hand, okay? And so, what was causing this to go towards my hand? Well, the platform was pushing on the cup, okay? So, I pulled on the platform, the platform pushed on the cup, so the cup felt like the platform was pushing up on it. Just like when I'm standing here on the earth, I feel like the earth is pushing up on me, supporting me, because really gravity, the ground is pushing up on me because gravity is pulling me down. So I feel like I'm just standing here. So this thing sort of had artificial gravity when it round, went around in a circle. So now let's see what happens when we use this idea of centripetal force in a couple cool examples. Right. So now we're going to demonstrate it's Check pretty this out. hard to do uh, visually for you, but we're going to try it anyway because it's really cool. I have a lit candle right here, so I'm going to put my finger, all right? And I'm going to spin it in a circle. And we all know that the flame of a candle goes upward because hot air kind of rises. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of artificial gravity here. We're going to spin this around, remember. And we're going to spin it in a circle. And it's going to go around fast in a circle. All right. And so what happens is it's going to think that that way is up, towards the middle is up. So if I put this on, this is to keep the candle from blowing out. And it spin this really fast. Watch where the flame of the candle points. It's no, pointing see. just a little bit towards the middle. Let me try one more time. A little hard to see. Here we go. It points oh, there it is. towards I see the it. middle of the circle because basically what's going on, again, is that uh, all the air inside this bell jar is being pushed on by the bell jar, okay, pushed that way. And so the air kind of flows down this way, and it's as if you have artificial gravity pulling you this way. You're being accelerated that way, just like the Earth is accelerating you. And so the flame will point towards the middle. Now we can do the last cool thing. It's time for the finale. The this paper saw. What I have here is a saw made of just normal, everyday paper. Uh, you've gotten paper cuts before. Well, we're going to take this paper and use it to cut a piece of wood. It's what? lightweight wood, but it's still wood. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, if we spin it really fast, remember, it's being pulled towards the middle in order for it to go in a circle. So what basically what happens is this piece of paper is going to become very taut. Right? It's trying to fly out in all directions, but it's being pulled in. And so it's going to be very tight, and it's going to get really stiff. And we can actually cut a piece of wood with a paper saw. Ooh. Don't try that at home. That could be one heck of a paper cut. There we go. And we have the paper saw cut right huh. there. Check that out. All right. Pretty sweet. So I like that. So vibrational motion is our last one. Things wiggle. They do the whole back and forth thing. They vibrate. They shake. They do a scientists call oscillate. These phrases describe the motion of a variety of objects. And you see this bobblehead up here in the corner. This bobblehead is a great example of vibrational motion. Okay? A pendulum is another great example. Vibration is occasionally desirable. You want vibration to happen sometimes. For example, a tuning fork, a reed and an instrument, uh, the, the speaker. Uh, those things are all good vibrations. All right? There are some times that... We don't want vibrational motion to occur, and we have to engineer things for that exact thing to happen. For example, Google Galloping Gertie. It's amazing. It's a bridge. It vibrates. It's not supposed to vibrate. Bridges, bridges are not supposed to move, but you'll check it out. It's amazing. Here's a great video of vibrational motion. It demonstrates to you how that speaker right there, you can see it, that speaker is moving up and down in a consistent manner, and the salt is, sh is moving 
in a vibrational pattern. So that speaker right there has vibrational motion. Pretty cool, pretty easy. So goal one, students will classify different types of motion. All the types of motion that we looked at today. First of all, straight line, projectile, circular, and vibrational. I need you to know all four for goal one and be able to talk about them. Get ready to go. I'll talk to you soon. I will see you.